Welcome back, Proppers. Today's project will be a Zeta Reticulin, otherwise known as a classic Roswell Gray. I start off by making a rough sketch of the front of the face to create a paper template. The rough sketch is then refined to the exact shape and size that I want the face to be. After cutting out one side of the template, including the eye and mouth opening, the paper is folded in half so I can get a symmetrical image for the other side. The complete template is then cut out and transferred onto a piece of 6mm EVA foam. After cutting out the full face template, another template is made to create an overlay of the eyes, nose, and mouth to add dimension. This is also created out of 6mm EVA foam. After sanding and rounding the overlay with the drummer rotary tool, it's attached to the full face with contact cement. Strips of 4mm EVA foam are attached to the back of the mask with contact cement to lock in the curvature. To create the large, bulbous, sloping forehead, darts are cut out of the top of the mask. To create the nose, two pieces of 10mm EVA foam will be layered together with contact cement. The initial forming of the nose will be made with the Dremel rotary tool. After attaching the nose to the face with contact cement and a little more sanding, it's time to create that bulbous head. I found that my moonlight mask from templates from Much Props was a perfect fit, so I decided to make a new template from it to accommodate the face. Before creating parts of a template that I wouldn't need, I marked out the outline of the face on the mask beforehand. To create the new template, layers of foil and gray tape will be attached to the mask. To ensure a sturdy template, several layers of gray tape is used. Four sections are marked out on the gray tape, and registration marks are placed between each section to ensure a proper realignment. The individual sections were then cut out with the X-Acto knife. Slits are made on the heavily curved sections of the template with the X-Acto knife to flatten them out. When the template is flattened out, the darts are automatically created. To create a permanent template out of cardstock, the two larger halves had to be marked and cut in half. A notching tool was used on all the registration marks. After all of the new templates were completed, they were transferred onto 6mm EVA foam and then cut out.
Before attaching the individual pieces together, the darts were all closed with contact cement. The pieces were held in the desired curvature while attaching the darts. After hand forming the pieces, they were attached together with contact cement. The outer edges were attached first to lessen the need for sanding. While I'm going through this tedious process here, this will be the great time for you to pause the video, press that like and subscribe button, and press the bell notification. Also, make sure that you ordered your copy of my new book, Inherent Evil. And don't forget to leave a review on Amazon. The next edition of my Action Adventure series will be out later this year. The face is centered on the head and contours are marked out on the sides to ensure an exact butt connection. After trimming the head, the face is connected one half at a time. Again, attaching the outer edge first to lessen the need for sanding. All necessary trimming is done as I go along. Any necessary fine tuning is done with the Dremel rotary tool. With the main structure completed, I can start on the detailing. Ooh, I want to probe you. No, 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 don't worry. This guy will never be able to harm you. He'll be safely tucked away on a shelf in my workshop. A strip of 4mm EVA foam will be contact cemented to the inside back of the head to sturdy it up.
bottom of the chin is closed up with a small piece of 6 millimeter EVA foam. Some preliminary sanding is done with the drummer rotary tool in several places before applying the foam clay. Foam clay is used to form and smooth the transitions around the eyes, nose, and mouth. After the foam clay had set up and two layers of Plasti Dip and a layer of paint has already been applied, I realized that I still needed a lot of work to soften the transitions around the eyes, nose, and mouth. So I had to add another thick layer of foam clay around those areas. I also took that opportunity to reform the nose. Increase the size of the eye holes and widen the angle before creating a template for the lens. After the foam clay had set up, I created a paper template for the eye lens. Small U-shaped cuts are made on the side of the head to free up the ears. Another small piece of 6mm EVA foam is attached to the back of the ear to project it away from the head. A network of veins for the side of the head were created and cut out of 2mm EVA foam. After the veins were attached to the side of the head with contact cement and the final sanding was done, an inner pouch for the mouth was made out of 2mm EVA foam. A strip of 4mm foam was used to lock the pouch in position, then the tongue was made out of 10mm EVA foam. After forming and smoothing the tongue with my drummer rotary tool, my new USB soldering iron was used to create texture. The tongue was then shaped and attached to the inside of the mouth with contact cement. After touching up blemishes with foam clay, the final coating of white Plasti Dip is applied. A base coat of gray acrylic paint is applied to the entire project. The second coating will be a darker shade of gray acrylic paint.
highlights of silver is then added to the cheeks, nose, the forehead, and the chin. A wash of burnt umber is applied around the eyes. A small detail is applied to the bridge of the nose with my USB soldering iron. A mixture of liquid text, cadmium red and yellow is applied to the inside of the mouth. That same mixture is lightened with pink before being applied to the tongue. The same mixture is used to paint the gum line. I outlined shadows in black on the bottom sections of the veins. The small nostrils are created with a large needle. Using the X-Acto knife, I cut a slit in the top and bottom gum line to attach the teeth. Instant glue is used to lock the teeth in place. The center of the veins are brightened with a red marker. A thin polycarbonate sheet is used to create the lens. Slots are cut into the inner perimeter of the eye socket to insert the lens. The lens are then covered with black paint. I'm labeling this the end of part one of this project. I still would like to create his neck as well as some more facial features. As always, thanks for watching. I appreciate your support. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, press that like button, 
and press the bell notification so you'll be notified when each new video is uploaded.